Hi, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Ling Ling from Aventus. Thank, thank you for joining us today uh, for our very first sessions of this online postgrad fair. We are very honored to have our alumni, Mr. Alvin Sabai, the CEO of iFood, to be with us today. Hi, hello. Hi, hi Alvin. A short introduction of, of Alvin. Um, Alvin graduated from the Roehampton MBA program with Dixation. He is also the CEO of iFood, which is a registered enterprise with a mission to provide employment um, with employment opportunities to the aging populations. He has over 20 years of senior management experience in the FMB businesses as well as uh, consultancy area. He is also our validatorian of this program. Without further ado, let's welcome Alvin to share his experience with us. Um, he, he will be touching on the following topics, which is on why did he choose to take up the Roehampton Master's Programme? How was his learning journey with us? How has the MBA impact on his business as well as his career? And some of the advisors that um, for people who are interested to take up an MBA, towards the end of the session, we will open up Q&A sessions um, for any of you who are interested or have any other questions you may have uh, to Elvin or to us as uh, Aventus. Thank you, everybody. Um, without further ado, Elvin, do you want to start your sharing? Sure. Thank you very much. Thank Hi. you. Yeah. So basically, um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my learning journey, uh, my past learning journey, rather. So I will go straight into you know, the different questions that we have set aside here. And I think first and foremost, the, the, the one that's critical is, you know, why did I choose to take up the Roehampton Masters? I think even before I talked about why I took, or why I have taken the Roehampton Masters, I think more uh, important is really, uh, you know, it's about taking on the Masters, you know? And I think if you today were to stand in a crowd and, you know, you throw a stone into a crowd, you'll probably hit somebody with a degree. Now, the question is whether he has a master's, he has a, a bachelor's or a doctorate. So the, the idea of going into a master's program is really about um, differentiating yourself from the crowd. And that I think is very, very important. So I embark on the master's program mainly to be able to, to draw differentiation between myself and probably everybody else uh, in the group. So that's what I did. Okay. Now, prior to me, actually... Um, uh, starting my own company, I actually worked in MNCs. And every time I get into a meeting, everybody's, everybody basically is a graduate there, you know. And the purpose, I think, if you're considering to take up a master's, uh, Roehampton master's specifically, I think the key point here is that uh, it's going to demonstrate to your employer that you, are, you have aspiration to be a director or in a C-suite situation. And that's really what it is, right? You're, you're investing in yourself and showing somebody that, hey, look, I am really um, demonstrating my aspiration to go up the, uh, the corporate ladder. Or you may decide to do it because you want to embark on your own, uh, set up your own company and things like that. Now, specifically why I chose uh, Roehampton is apart from the cost. I think the, the, the cost itself is one consideration. Like everybody else, we think about the cost. And I think it's a fair thing. You know, uh, you will have to pay for your MBA. More importantly, apart from the cost, after I have scanned through and I have looked through um, the different MBAs that are around, I opted for the Roehampton because of the, uh, for me, it is a shortest uh, time frame that for me to get my MBA. And that was very important because I am not going to lie that it's going to be an easy journey once you start a master's program. It is going to be painful. Um, and but what it is is that once you set your mind to it and you want to do it in the shortest period of time, you don't want something that lasts two and a half years, three years, or something like that. So that is one of the considerations why the Roehampton MBA uh, is a good option for me, and that's why I embarked on it. So specifically was the time frame. Okay. Um, now, if we look at the next, uh, my, my learning journey, now this is a bit interesting because as far as the learning journey is concerned, you know, I think I need to say again that, you know, it is initially tough, but once you get the hang of it, you will be able to, to just, uh, you know, sail through it. Uh, it is something that you have to stay committed. 
um, my learning journey initially was a bit uh, hectic, but I appreciated the the way that this MBA program by Rental was structured. It was a typical weekend program. So I could concentrate on doing my own work, my own job, uh, Mondays to Fridays, and then devote my time, specifically Saturday and Sundays, for the MBA program itself. And initially, of course, it, it was, an, like I said, initially it was painful, but later on, I was actually looking forward to coming to class because uh, as I kept learning new things, I was then able to apply them almost instantaneously to my job. And that was very important for me, you know. Um, what it also shows me is that there's a whole spectrum of new knowledge that is out there that, you know, if you just carry on and you assume that, oh, you know, I, and you don't force yourself into learning, then you lose that, that, that extra knowledge that would otherwise be there and you, you don't know it exists. I give you an example. Um, you know, one of the things that I do apart from running my own business, I also do consultancy. And previously when I was doing consultancy, I would see my clients and I'll talk to them. And I don't, while, while I tell them my own experience and I bring best practices, rarely can I actually bring academic, uh, real published literature to them and says, look, this is somebody who has done this, or this is the literature and this is what it proves to be. And only after the MBA program, you know, did it avail me to that resource base, you know, that now I think I'll be able to do it better. I, I, I'm more equipped. And similarly in corporate, if you were to share, you know, in a, in whether it be a department meeting or anything of that sort, and you were to share your knowledge, I think the minute you hop onto the MBA program and you start learning, it value add to your job almost instantaneously. And I found that with my Roehampton Masters. So I, at, at least that, that's the, the value add that I found. Okay. The next thing that I found, uh, or, or, you know, my, my learning journey, which gave me a very positive feel is the faculty members. I think they were generally well selected. I enjoyed their le lectures. Um, what I also enjoyed was the fact that there were a lot of uh, classroom discussion. Interestingly, um, this master's is a bit unique in the sense that you don't sail through um, throughout with your group. In a sense that if you, you start in a batch, you don't sail through throughout the whole period. Okay, so what it means is that when I'm batch two for the Rohampton MBA, I had batch three, batch four, uh, and I think I, at one stage I had batch five inside the program also. So I had different batches coming in at different stages. So what it means, really, we had a melting pot of people coming in. As, so I could be at doing my third module or somebody could be doing his first module, the next person could be doing his sixth module. So we had a lot of interactions. We had interactions with people coming from different walks of life, uh, different stages of their MBA. So you don't just learn from the faculty members, you actually learn quite a fair bit from your peers. And I think that is something that is, uh, for me, very interesting. And I found it very good. Okay. So that, I would have now covered this too. Do, is there any Im immediate questions that anyone wants to ask me or am I speaking too fast? Are we good to carry on? Are we okay? Okay. So I will now proceed on, you know, how has the uh, MBA impacted me and in my career, okay? So more importantly, like I said, was um, it gave me a, a whole new set of knowledge and equipped me to do my, my, my work better, of course. And I think, uh, as I earlier mentioned, it would, if you are going to, if you tend to be, or if you want to continue to be employed, it's going to show your bosses that really you are serious in wanting to go up the corporate ladder. You know, you're making a, a real serious effort. And it will show, as you start on the MBA program, it will show that you have actually attained certain knowledge. You'll be more confident in what you're saying. You will not just be able to speak off your cuff, but you'll be able to also share with them real statistics, real information that you would draw. And the Roehampton MBA is interesting because we get access to a whole lot of library information. And anytime you need a journal article, you can actually get access to it. And that's important because... If you are now wanting to get information like that, it may not totally be always available or you have to go onto a paid platform. But when you start the program, then all this becomes accessible. Okay, so that's, that's the usefulness of it. Now, something else that I, I actually impacted me in my uh, career is that as I was embarking on this Roehampton MBA, 
I, and with the many different modules that I've gone through, I stumbled on an idea and I actually shared it in my MBA chat group. So the MBA chat, the Roehampton MBA chat has all the cohorts inside. So everyone who, has, who is in the MBA or have come, or graduated from it is in this chat. So we, I shared a, a business idea with the, with the chat group. And interesting enough, after I created this idea, I had like 20 different MBA uh, classmates who said, oh, I'm interested to, to be part of this business journey. And since the time when I've done it, which was in 2018 now, I've actually started a new, new company together with uh, four other MBA classmates of mine. They're different cohorts, but they are now not just my past classmates or classmates. They're actually now my business partner. And it's interesting because all four come from different walks of life, but we all went through the same Roehampton Masters. And it was a lot of sharing, a lot of knowledge base that we gained from it that actually materialized and was put to really good use in that sense. Okay. So just to give you a brief about the people that are uh, you know, coming through. So in this um, new code that I've created, I had one which is a, a ship captain. He joined Roehampton MBA program in my cohort. I had a guy who was from the oil and gas. He also joined uh, in my batch. Then I had two other people who were from different batch. One was like batch three, one was batch four. One happened to be a, a, a doctorate from who lectures at the Masik, but because his doctorate was in a different field, he wanted an MBA. And interesting enough, he sat with his MBA and he, he also graduated, of course, but you know, we were drawing from information that we were getting from people across platform, across industry. The last person was also a business owner. So again, he brought to the table different things. And, and really what have actually impacted me in that sense is that I started an actual real business on a real business plan that was created as part of my learning journey. And then it, trans, you know, it, it went on to become a real business. And so business has been set up and we are in the stages now of launching the business. Okay, so that's what it is. Now, um, another thing that, is, that really impacted me, like I said, it's the credibility of the, the, you know, the information or whatever that you have or the knowledge that you have gained that you are able to now share with confidence to whenever you are speaking on any topic or anything related to which is work-related. You know, you'll feel more confident for me, at least. It has helped me in that sense. Okay? So now... So what are the advice uh, you know, about taking uh, up a master's? Actually, to be fair, for me, I, I, if I have to give you one advice, I can tell you that there is really no consideration. You know? why, why, why there's no consideration? Education is really your best investment. Well, you could take the money that you're going to pay for a real time and probably buy yourself a Rolex watch and be very happy about it. But I, I don't think that's what it is, right? You are really investing in yourself. For me, the Roehampton Masters has brought uh, me uh, total value add because it was the shortest MBA that I could find. I mean, I, I won't say it's the shortest, but it is it was within the time frame. I find it credible because we had information. We had, we had there was a real university that exists. You know, some MBAs that I've actually uh, looked at, they don't even exist, but they were giving online MBAs. And you know, when then you start worrying, you know, the credibility. This one. My classmates, I, I didn't manage to go to London, but my classmates graduated in London. They saw a physical uh, university, and I think that's important. Anyway, you can still research that. But by and large, what I'm trying to say is that the real advice I give you about taking up a, the, the Roehampton Masters is that it is a worthwhile course. You know, you're going to spend something that you're really investing in yourself, and you're going to see real benefit in it. I've experienced the real benefit in it. Okay. Um, now, what, what really the, 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 the next advice that I, I can give you is that it's interesting because uh, I'm on LinkedIn. And being on LinkedIn, what actually happens is that I deliberate, deliberately put myself as available for jobs. So every time there's a job, you know, I will get to see and I can look at and, and see what are the jobs available. Not that I, I need one because I'm running my own but business, but more so I wanted to see, you know, and as I looked into it, I would straight away see that, and interestingly, it's been increasing. Okay, so 35 to 40 percent would have a master's, and that, that's what really it is. You know, 35 to 40 percent would have a master's. So, imagine if you are a potential employer and you want to hire, you have the option of 
hiring someone who's a bachelor or someone who's got a master's, chances are you may probably go with someone who's got a master's. And now this equips you. So that, to me, is, is the best advice you can have. Because if I had gone on to LinkedIn and noticed that, you know, for any job application, there's only like, you know, a, a, a small amount or none, you know, then it doesn't matter. But imagine that there's 30% who's going to compete with you for this job or 40% who's got a master's. So you will, you will probably, you know, be, you know, it'd be harder for you to be inclus- included in that group when they're looking at it, you know, when looking at a potential employee. And I think that's important, right? So for me, like I said, the master's program has its benefits. I also want to raise another point, which is an interesting point. I think with this pandemic situation, uh, we may be coming to a tail end, we may not. But a lot of people have lost their job. Now, again, coming back to the same thing. Assuming in the unlikely event that we have to lose our job, you have one person who has a bachelor and yes, the other person has got a master's. You know, uh, with everything being equal, you know, uh, I think in economics term, you call this satiras paribas. So everything being equal, as an employer, you would want to take the best qualified person or at least the person who shows that he has aspiration to climb the corporate ladder. He's got, you know, a master's that supports his knowledge. And I think that is important. So I, I don't know how else I can convince any of you to consider to take up a master's. I have found that my journey with Roehampton has been a very interesting one. I've enjoyed the journey throughout the, the entire process. I must stress again, it is not a simple uh, process, not a painless process. But then again, if it was painless, it wouldn't be worth your money anyway. But you will get the hang of it and you will enjoy the journey. And I think that is what it is really. And so that, that's as much as my experience with the MBA program. Okay, I hope I've given you an insight um, and to, to exactly my journey. I'm happy to answer any questions you have now, if you, you have any questions for me, or if you want specific details. I've also looked through the, the um, modules that, are, that now you would have to take. Most of the modules that you are taking now are quite similar to what I have taken. But you have some additional, uh, I won't say additional, they have substituted some modules, which I took in 2018. What I want to tell you with this is that it shows that it is not a university that just stays stagnant, take the same materials and keep flashing the same materials. They've actually moved with time. So now you have things like sustainable business strategy. I never had that. I had cross-cultural management, which was a bit different. You have now project management, which, which is a very important module for me. You know, I happen to take that at my bachelor's level, but... What I'm saying is that they have actually stayed with time. So Rampton is not, at least for me, when I looked at this uh, curriculum itself, I actually feel that it is one of those universities that have taken time, pain and effort, you know, to make whatever they're teaching current. I also need to say this. My own daughter is in a, in a local university and I've actually sat through some of her Zoom le- lectures that were going on because of the pandemic. And... It's interesting that, you know, sometimes you can see how motivated some lecturers are and some are really not there, you know. And although this is one of the, the local uh, the few universities in Singapore, the, the four universities that we have in Singapore, you know, um, I can tell you that if I compare our, the, the faculty members together with the, the Aventis uh, faculty members for Roehampton Masters, I think they are, uh, they are they're credible. You know, credible enough that you can learn sufficient and you, you, you can be happy that this journey of yours will pay off. All right? Okay. Any questions you have for me? Hi, Alvin. Um, there's a question that um, was sent to me uh, privately. Okay. Um, the participant hopes you can share more about the student profile, who are your classmates, um, the age group, as well as the experience that they shared in class. And... Um, is it purely locals or what is the diversity of the class? Okay, so I think that's a very good question. Um, I had a, my initial batch had a, a real interesting mix. When I joined, I was batch two. So I had, I had a group from batch one with me. So batch one had uh, a lot of people in corporate as well as they also had some CEOs in, in, in the group. Um, that batch the vast majority were all local. My batch, I had a, a, a mixed bag. So I have 
some people who are local, some people who are not. I have quite a few who are from banks. I had uh, oil and gas. I had a lot of uh, uh, groups which were from uh, different MNCs in Singapore. Uh, I also had a, a lot of people who were in uh, a lot of colleagues or friends of mine who were from total diverse backgrounds. You know, like I said, I, I told you one of my, my business partner now is actually what he, he was a ship captain. So there was real diversity. So we had locals and we had people who were from overseas with us. In one of the batch, there was a, uh, there was a, a Korean there. There was a, a, a Chinese person, Chinese national there. So there were mixed bags. There were Indian nationals that were there. So we, we had quite a fair bit of different groups of people. And vast majority came there uh, with, of course, knowledge that they had already. The youngest that was in the MBA group with me was someone who was, I think, 26 or 27. I can't remember specifically. She was in a, a local listed company. She graduated from NUS and then she joined the Roehampton program. So it was interesting because she was pretty young. So I think she had fulfilled the criteria to, to fit into the program with, with, because being a lady, she didn't have to serve national service. So she had about like two, three years, three years of, of uh, experience. She was specifically in the uh, retail and real estate business, a local, uh, a local company, but a listed company in Singapore. So she was, I think, if I rem remember correctly, she was the youngest. The oldest was uh, uh, in batch one, I think was the CEO of, a, of a, a group, and he was close to about 70. Yeah. The, so you, you have a wide spectrum. You have some very young ones and you have some which are, of course, much older. I think the older ones tend to be 50 and above, but they, went, they would probably occupy maybe 15 to 20 percent of the entire group. The vast majority falls within the age group of um, 32 to 40. And of course, you have this a bit, the, the, again, you know, if you look at a bell curve, you have probably some which are like 26, 27 so that's that was the spread that you had. So you had you you would have a very good mix bag mix bag of uh, people with different knowledge base coming to this program. I hope I answered your question. Okay. Thank you, Alvin. Uh, I have another question that have uh, come to me. Um, the person is checking is that uh, what kind of career roles that they can look at upon completion of the. MBA and um, as a mentor yourself, um, what are some guidance that you would give them? I think, okay, there are a few things that you need to look at. Typically, if you are already in, in management, you are a middle manager, then you should look at, you know, with an MBA, it's going to equip you to go to a director level. If not, you know, with more experience, you can even look at a C-suite situation. But what I, what I think is important is that you're making your claim that I am interested to climb the corporate ladder or I'm interested to do more than what I'm, in, I'm doing now. And that is what you are giving your employer. And don't just look at your own employer because, you know, uh, there are a lot of other people searching. So, and interestingly, you know, I, I need to, to also tell you this. A lot of uh, friends of mine who have actually changed job, every time they change job, they're looking at 20%, uh, 22%. Uh, increase of their salary. So there's, there's always that possibility right, to go to another organization. Whether it's better than yours, that's not, not in, in this discussion now. But what I'm trying to say is that you are going to put yourself in good state in the sense that someone will look at you and say, okay, you know, this guy is equipped. The, one of the a real situation I have with somebody who's much younger who has taken this, the, the, M, the MBA program, I've seen the person straight away get into a position where their existing company was prepared to give them uh, a higher salary, but another organization actually outbid them. And, he, and the person left, of course, because you, 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 do, you do know that when you, when you take your master's, you have some aspiration. You want to get up the corporate ladder. You're not going to do it, go through the pain just for no reason. So you, you know that where, where you want to get. I also need to tell you this, which is important. Currently in my, my startup, I have a batch of NUS MBA students that's working live on my project. And the project was actually the conceptualized project which I have with my course mates from Roehampton. So NUS MBA is actually looking at this program because looking at my, my particular uh, thing. And I, I, so I interacted with the MBA NUS 
students and they are full-time students. And I can tell you, honestly, they are no different from the students that I see or my classmates were when I was doing my Roehampton. So now the question is that, of course, we have different costs, right? So the cost of doing an MBA with uh, NUS is staggering. And then you have a cost which is not so. But of course, you, you, you may come to me and say, okay, look, you know, there's value in different things. Obviously, there's value in different things. But remember that you don't just do an MBA only on the basis that I'm going to do an MBA. You're also going to have some skill sets that you come. You've also got aspirations of your own. And I think if you put the two together, you should be able, the fact that you're even coming to, to, to a talk on an MBA program already show you have aspiration. You know, so I've given you the reason why I chose the Rampton because of the shortest time frame. You can take something that takes two years and just drag on the pain. That's a choice that everybody has. You can also decide to take something that's more expensive and pay for more expensive. But ultimately, when you finally go onto a program like that, you must be able to be assured that, you know, you're going to get benefit from it. And you draw benefit from it. And I don't know how else I can, you know, because I've gone through the program and I can tell you that, and I've also compared across uh, different universities and I can tell you that I don't see very much different apart from of course the brand but the brand comes also with cost you know you can go out there and you can you can drive a, a Mercedes or you can drive a Honda or whatever you like you can you can still aspire to own a Mercedes you know but it doesn't matter you don't need to do it now today right and ultimately I think that you will be equipping yourself with the knowledge to work well in corporate that's what it is okay any other questions you have? Uh, yes, Alvin, we have another question um, from one of the participants. Uh, I'm sure that um, not uh, everybody is, is actually intending to do their business. What are your advice um, to why should they take up an MBA if the, the future economist seems to be geared towards the specific industries like IT and automation? How um, I think some of your classmates will have different experience, right? Do you want to share some uh, about it? Okay. I think the demographics will always change. You know, if you look at it, you always have a situation whereby, like now the hottest course in NUS is actually computer science. You get into computer science and everybody says you're going to come out and you're going to get the highest pay. You're going to be the highest pay. To me, yes, you always need that group of people. Now they, the, 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 that particular sector seems to be doing very well. But an MBA doesn't look at specific to the industry. It looks at you being ultimately filling a position which is a C-suite position. So even in the course of my work and in the course of the different CEOs that I interact with, not all of them are subject matter expert. If you wanted to do a subject, be a subject matter expert, then don't do an MBA. Go do an MSc, do an MA do a master's of IT or something like that. An MBA is where you come and say, I'm going to be able to climb to the Swiss level. I can be a, a chief marketing officer. I can be a CEO. I can be a COO. I don't need to be the subject matter expert, you know, but I need to have global view. I need to be able to know what it takes to run a business. I need to understand the, the nuts and bolts of it. I don't need to be so specific with the sector. So my point to you is that tomorrow, if, um, AI becomes the new thing. Does it mean that all of us have to quit our MBA and go and do an MBA in AI? No. What it means is that there will always be some people who needs to look at it from a, from a global perspective and an MBA gives you that knowledge, gives you that skill set. Uh, of course, you are right. You know that um, the IT sector is probably the, the, the sector to be in now. But it doesn't mean that, you know, you, you, you change according to, to the type. You know, I, I don't think that would be the case. Yeah. Or at least that's my, my, my honest opinion. Yeah. Okay. I hope I answered your question. I hope I answered the other few also, uh, you know, because if, if I've not been clear, then you can ask me again. I'm happy to answer all your questions. Thank you, Alvin. We have another question. Um, the, the participant actually asked, what was one of the key highlights of your entire MBA program that you think that it is all worth it? And um um, how how did uh, what are also what is one of the key challenges that you had during the entire MBA session? Okay, so there are two different questions here, but they are both coming to culminating to the same answer. Actually, I have the most, or rather, the 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 part that I enjoyed the most, or I had the most benefit from, was doing my dissertation. I actually did a dissertation replicating a study 
Okay, in an MBA, maybe for those of you who are wondering what a dissertation is, when you finish your MBA, or when you finish most of the modules, you have to finish off with an MBA. Okay, I notice now you have a choice of doing an MBA, uh, sorry, doing a dissertation, or you can do a consulting project. Okay, but I did the, I did the dissertation. My dissertation was based on a study was, that was done in the US. Okay, so I replicated this study, and it was about whether customers would be prepared to pay more if they patronize a social enterprise versus a non-social enterprise. Okay, so that is important. So that means if I see two restaurants and I see one that says they are a social enterprise, they hire ex-convict or they hire people who are elderly, I would be more prepared to patronize them and pay more vis-a-vis uh, -vis paying to an, another one that's not. So when I did my dissertation, which was the, the part, the sort of the climax of my MBA, I actually was very doubtful. I doubted that Singaporeans would view this and say, Say, oh, I'm prepared to support more on social enterprise. Interestingly, when I finished and did all the, the different statistics that I had to do, I, had to, I actually had about uh, 100 over uh, people who had to answer my survey questions. And I did all the, the different statistical studies that was required to support my MBA. You know, we, in MBA, when you finish, you have to do these studies, which is actually either a qualitative or a quantitative um, evaluation of all the results. Okay, so what actually happens is that it was interesting that it proved that Singaporeans were actually more prepared to support a social enterprise. And that gave me grounding to move on to do my business in the right in that direction. That means I, I was confident that if I wanted to run, in which I converted my company to become a social enterprise. Now, don't get me wrong. A social enterprise is a profit-driven company. Okay? So we're not charity status. But it gave me the grounding to know that, yes, generally in Singapore, people are also looking at it from that perspective. And I doubted it from the start. So that was the climax of my, my studies where I did it. And I finally found that, okay, more importantly was I had that. I was, in, I was immediately soaked in the entire process of doing a dissertation and benefited from it. That was also a very painful process because you need to finish that within, a, I think, a three-month uh, period. And you would finally finish with like 10,000, uh, in my case, about 15,000 words, you know. And there were a lot of things that come up. And when you finish with that dissertation, you know that, okay, you know, you have reached like the, 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 the pinnacle of your own studies in that sense. Because even if you decide, for some of you, you may decide, I want to carry on and I want to do a, a, a PhD, let's say. You still need to do, your, your, you still need to do a, a, a paper, your dissertation paper, which will finally give you your PhD. So that's still the process that you have to go. But now at, at bachelor's level, you never touch that. But at an MBA, you have that experience, exposure. This, uh, whatever exposure you're going to get can really be used in a corporate situation and it will be beneficial for you because really if you decide that I want to know what's the sentiments out there, how am I going to run a survey, how I'm going to articulate this survey into a, a statistical study and prove your point, your hypothesis. The key thing is being able to push up hypothesis. You will know for a fact that you have done it well. Okay? I, I hope that is clear. I am not confusing anybody. Okay, you have any other questions? Yes, Alvin, we have another question. Mm -hmm. um, the participant asked, how do you prepare for your MBA? And do you have any advice for somebody who has graduated more, um, more than 10 years, 20 years ago? And uh, what, do, what would it be like returning to school after a long while? I, okay, the thing about MBA is that it is not uh, something that you need to to do it very close to your graduation. In fact, for me, I did my MBA when I was 50. So you can imagine, you know, I, I, I had a, a total lack. I mean, so it was a long time before I, I, I went back to doing a study like this. So to prepare myself is very simple. Actually, the preparation to it is just about telling yourself that I want to get this done and I, and I know the purpose and intent for doing this. More importantly is that, like I said, the initial stages will seem painful, but after maybe the first one module, you will be able to fit in. I cannot, uh, I, I, I don't see any uh, real difference or significant if you have finished your studies quite some time back. What is it that you bring to the table is that you bring corporate knowledge that is actually applied and can be applied to, the, to what your course of studies is. So you're not going to go there and be totally lost. It's not like when you are a student and doing your bachelor's and you're totally lost. You've never had corporate experience. With your corporate experience, you go there and you challenge your lecturers. And that was what I was doing week in, week out. 
I was challenging the faculty members and I was saying, when they tell me something and I don't agree with them, I challenge them on the topics. And that makes the, the whole classroom environment more robust. And you're going to benefit from it. You could come and do the MBA and just say, never mind, I'll just keep quiet, be, be quiet and, and act as if I'm a real student and be happy about it. But I, I wasn't prepared to do that. I wasn't prepared to do it. I'm going to spend money. I'm going to go there and challenge and, and be clear in my mind that when I finish that module, I have drained as much as possible from the faculty members so that I get my knowledge. And that was what I was interested in. And I would advise you to do that. All of you, in fact, you want to do this, do it because you're going to go there and share your own corporate experience and say, that, look, in my situation, it didn't apply what you're telling me. And let them, let them prove it to you, uh, whether they agree or otherwise. You know, because every time there's this challenge, you know, that what is learned academically may not totally be the same in a real working corporate situation. I challenge you that in an MBA studies, it's very, very close. If it's a bachelor, it's a bit different, okay? It's quite far. You, you have to learn certain theories, which are, which are probably the, you know, management theories that are there previously and whatever, things have changed. But an MBA is always new, very relevant, and, and at the latest. I also pointed this out when I took pains to look through the curriculum, and I noticed that they have actually changed the curriculum. The random MBA has changed the, the curriculum to make it current, and that is interesting, you know. So that, that's really the, the, you know, something for you to consider. I hope I answered that question too. Okay. Thank you very much, Alvin. I don't have any uh, questions, but I would like to share some other topics. Um, later on, we have another two uh, sessions. Um, at 3 p.m., we will be touching on transform uh, transforming business model. It's not just about technology. At 4 p.m., we are sharing on project management, which Alvin didn't get to do during his MBA. Um, the lecturers from University of Roehampton would be touching on um, project management. Alvin, if you have time, you can actually join us since you have missed it previously. And um, let, uh, some of the sharing that we, apart from what Alvin has shared, um, this is some of the testimonial we have from our students and alumni. It is a lifelong learning journey and friendship are being built during the, 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 the study process. Um, that is from Mr. Hamid Hassan, the director and owner of uh, Hamid Rashid Hassan. Okay. We also have uh, from Ms. Rachel Chan. She has, um, has had, she had had a great experience with the Rohampton MBA. She enjoyed the flexibility of the course, the study materials, um, the resources that she had for her research, research and assignment. The faculty and staff are friendly and um, in helping her in doing all her uh, the entire learning journey. Okay. This is some of our, we had um, graduation ceremony. Right now, um, we do not have any plans because of the pandemic, but once situation is better, we will be um, doing the graduation back in Singapore again. You, and you will be invited to join the ceremony in UK as well if you would like to go over. Uh, I'm sure Alvin enjoyed the ceremony, giving his valedictorian speech during the local ceremony. Okay. Um, the qualification that you'll be getting will be the same as awarded on campus. The certificate and transcript is actually issued by the U University of Roehampton directly. Well, upon successful completion, the certificate and transcript will be sent to Singapore for your collection. Before I end the session, do you have, does anybody has any last questions? Any questions for us uh, or for Alvin? before we end today's session. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Alvin, for your sharing. Thank you. Yeah, pleasure is mine. Thank you. All right, thank you. Have, have a great day ahead. Bye-bye. Bye. Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning into this webinar. We know for sure this skill will go a long way. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more webinar replays. See you again. Bye.